Well, we'll make this quick here. I gotta give you a little bit of an update on this barn addition. I've got the last load of feed going into the cows this morning. And Jared is coming in behind me with another one for this one group of heifers here. When we were last in here, giving you an update on what was going on, I think we had some of these curbs left to do. I don't remember if they had uh, brisket boards in here or not, but these are the head-to-head -head stalls here. And then there's gonna be a row of stalls against that perimeter wall. We use sand for bedding, so this will be filled right up to the top of the curb here with sand all the way across. Uh, they are installing the rubber on the flooring here. So they have this feed alley section here already rolled out. It's not nailed down or anything. They'll be back here working on that today. And then they've got the other three alleyways uh, left to do. I think when we last gave you an update here, I don't think the crossovers were poured yet. There's going to be a water against that divider wall there. And on each and every uh, crossover, there'll be a, a water going the whole length of that uh, pad there. Uh, the waters do have heaters in them, but they are insulated. And the water line obviously comes up through the ground through what they call a sono tube. Um, the waterers really don't need any electricity to keep them uh, from freezing the warmth from the ground and the, the volume of water that the cows go through will keep them from uh, freezing. So I thought I would just give you a quick update. We've got Jared coming in behind us here. He helped me feed uh, this morning and um, he is coming right now so i've got to shut this camera off get my load of feed dumped and then we will do a couple things to the chopper and then get chopping some corn here so again just a quick walk through here um the next phase will be after they get the rubber in there's going to be a outfit that comes in and they will put the stalls in the headlocks the gates and all of that and that'll probably be the next time that we join up with you on this uh barn edition so we'll go ahead and get on it here
Well, we're just getting into the shop. I've got a couple of things to do to the corn head. We'll talk about that here in a second. When I was driving across the front of the parlor, I happened to look down to the shop and our bulk oil delivery company was here. Filling our bulk hydraulic oil and engine oil tanks. Now the other day I ended up reading in the back of one of the farm magazines that there is a class action lawsuit against Warren, the company that packages the oils for Napa. And this lawsuit is going back to like 2014. So anybody that has used Warren hydraulic oil on their tractors, um, you can get involved in that class action lawsuit. Uh, most of the tractors, their hydraulic and transmissions are all one unit. In other words, the transmission on a tractor and the hydraulic system are all tied in together. And you can't use just regular hydraulic oil on a tractor. You need to use what's called high trance hydraulic and transmission oil. There's special additives that have to be put into the oil that work with the transmission. It's not the hydraulic system. It's the transmission that needs a specially blended oil to work on the clutches and the brakes and all that stuff. Now we use what's called Navigard. Navigard uh, tractor hydraulic fluid. It is specifically designed for high trance uh, tractors. Uh, it's a high trance oil, hydraulic transmission oil for uh, tractors. Now you might be saying, why do you have a Warren pail? Well, we use the Warren oil and the hydraulic systems on the trucks because basically all it is is a hydraulic pump that powers hydraulic cylinders, motors, and so on. And all you need is just a standard hydraulic oil. You do not need high trance. Same with skid steers. You need to have and should be using a high trance oil on uh, your skid steers as well. Uh, John Deere High Guard is probably the best hydraulic oil to use. You might be saying, why aren't you using that? Well, to be honest with you, we change our hydraulic oil enough, whether it's naturally done or we just get into a uh, interval that um, we change the oil a little more frequently. We get a, a leaky hose on something, you're adding oil, and you end up with fresh oil uh, in the tractor anyways. So what we're doing here is we have to replace some of these cleaners. Uh, there's this little plate that goes on the bottom of the knife drum here. We need to install a couple of those. I, I had leaves building up on these units here and then once the leaves build up it builds out to the end of the knife and then the drum doesn't cut and you end up knocking corn over. So we're gonna get them on there then we'll sharpen the knives and then we'll be able to roll out here uh, this morning and we're down to the last few days of chopping BMR. We should be done with BMR hopefully by maybe Thursday. And then we can get that bunk covered and move into chopping the conventional silage. So we'll join up with you once we get to the field here. But like I said, I have a few of these cleaners to put on. Um, there is one missing on this drum. It goes on uh, just like that. There's lefts and rights. You got an eight millimeter bolt and a 10 millimeter bolt. The eight millimeter bolt is supposed to act as a shear bolt. If you hit a stone or something that should shear that bolt off, knock it out of the way. But a few of these are gone altogether. So we'll get them on there and then we can roll out. Well, we just chopped the first load of the day here, and this is actually 
conventional silage. The bunk that we're currently filling had conventional silage in it and we had covered that up with the BMR that we're chopping now. And what we're doing is we are green chopping a load or two a day to feed uh, instead of the um, conventional silage that is now covered up. This field that we're in, we're just north of, well, the lagoon is sitting right on the other side of that hill there. And we have a shooting range set up here. There's a gazebo right there. We'll drive by that in a second. And then we shoot into this hillside here down on the other end. Now you might be asking, what do you have a shooting range for? Well, that's how we deal with uh, trespassers so you might say well why do you have a truck in there <laughs> well um, this old Ford truck here was uh, one of our old farm trucks and the engine went on it so they just brought it down here and they use it for target practice so at least um, we have a Ford that's good for something there and then there's some targets in that uh, hill there that they shoot at as well. This gazebo uh, actually used to belong to this house here that we bought a couple years ago and they drug the gazebo over here and they shoot from it. So we will head on to the field that we're chopping BMR in. Well, time for the fun to begin. We pulled into this field five, six days ago. And there's a little bit of a laneway between it and the road here. I figured it was going to be the driest that it would ever be. And we pulled in right there. I wanted to go up through here to start going around the right way. Truck started spinning, so I started going that way, and we buried the first truck right there. So we figured we better not do this, so we pulled out of here. Had to back every truck out onto the road, and we moved to another location. But we have to get this out of here today, and. We're just gonna have to play with the dump wagons. What our goal is, is to get the trucks up on top of that hill there and then just bring all of the dump wagons to them up there. We're probably gonna have to pull the trucks in from right, right where we're sitting. There's a good hard driveway all the way in here. We'll probably have to pull the trucks from here up to the top of that hill. In order to get them turned around and in on dry ground. So I've got one truck here behind me. Dump wagons aren't here yet. So we'll uh, get started here, I guess. Well, we got one load out of here. And we need to get things opened up we didn't do too bad getting up through there our first pass up through here was just miserable so we've got to get this chunk down here so that we have a landing to get these dump wagons or get the trucks in here to dump onto them this is really not ideal right here but it's not too bad anyways so We'll just have to see how things go. This is a right away to get in here. We might have a mess right here that we'll have to clean up later on, but I would rather have these dump in the field, but it's not working too bad, so I think it's going to work. Oh, we'll see how he does here. I'd like to go right back up through this one side here. Well, we've got one dump wagon here waiting for another one to get here. 
It's wet right here, but it's not too bad on that side. So he's going to try to get a head start here. If he can't make it, we'll hook on to him with the chopper. That's good enough. And um, get him up top here. But we do have a pullout tractor coming here too. So we'll just let him. Actually, he's going to probably try it again. But I can hook on to him with the chopper. We get trucks up here then we can dump on them up top and then they can just make their way to the bottom once they get loaded well we've got the first road tractor that we're gonna pull in here We'll pull him up top. So we have him set. He can get a dump wagon loaded on him and actually a couple of them then drive straight out. Got that one trailer placed. Now we're pulling the second one up through. We loaded Davy. He dumped onto a straight truck that backed in. And we're just kind of waiting for the pull-out tractor to get here to help get trucks in the field and the other dump wagon. We've got, looks like Sarah on deck and Alex out on the work road waiting to uh, get in here. So we'll get Zach pulled up around the corner here, get him placed, and and the dump wagon can get to them. Well, we've got these two fields done. This is the larger one of the two. The back field over in there, that one wasn't wet at all. But this one was wet right where it needed not be wet. Real wet right here on the entrance. They pulled the tractor trailers in, got them up on top of the hill here, dumped the carts onto them up on top of the hill, and then the rest of it uh, got dumped onto the 10 wheelers just right inside the driveway here. They backed the 10 wheelers in, dumped onto them, and then they were able to uh, pull on out of here. So we're going to get to the next location now, which is down the road by a few miles. 
and um, we've got to do some dump cart work in there as well. some decent going here now this field we've been able to chop without having to use the dump wagon we were able to load the trucks directly now this field here in this whole location um, this all got hit with hail back I don't know when it was early August I believe it was and you can kind of see the leaves are a little bit shredded here uh, on this corn. Now the corn that we had to uh, uh, pull the trucks, that, that was two fields that we had to pull the trucks in and out of the lot. That um, area there, there was a guy that has a bunch of sweet corn. He lost a fair amount of sweet corn uh, from that hail storm from back in August or so. So we've got this one just about, this field here is just about done. Then we've got about 15 acres or so, a couple miles from here that we're gonna have to do with the dump wagon. We tried chopping that here yesterday and we had a couple of trucks get stuck in there and I didn't have anybody available to uh, run dump wagons yesterday and we moved to well actually we came in here went around this field seen this one was dry I moved down to the field on the lower side of that new seed and hay strip over there we've got a couple of trucks stuck in there so we moved out of here and we wanted to save this for the dump wagon as well so we've got just a couple of loads left in here and then we'll have to finish out the day with that other field there so we'll keep on keeping on here this corn's running right at about 60 percent moisture it's a little on the dry side but after what we get done here tonight we'll have about 27 or 8 acres left and that'll do it for BMR which is a good thing because we're just about out of uh, bunk space back when we decided to call it quits on the last bunk I was wondering if maybe we shouldn't have put a little bit more in uh, that bunk uh, before we started filling this one just so that we'd have enough room but it looks like it's all gonna fit so We'll keep plugging away here. We've got one more time down through the field after we get to the end. And that'll do her for this farm. Well, there isn't much that you can see, but we started this field here yesterday. And... Um, we had a truck stuck down in behind us and we kind of hooked on to him and just yanked him out up through uh, the field rate right where we're going up through now. We've just made a landing so that we can get trucks in and out of the field. We can dump on the trucks up by the road here and we've got a spot that's kind of opened up. We got Newton just pulled both of his trailers in. I think we're going to be all right here uh, if we load up by the road on harder ground and then um, we can kind of get this chopped out of here. We're not chopping in any, uh, any great pattern here. We just had to get things opened up so we can get the trucks in and we're just trying to get loads on now to get everybody out of here and then we'll open up the rest of the field here. 
Well, that is it for tonight. We ended up getting this field done. And I got the last load going out on that dump wagon right now. And he's going to dump that on a straight truck down there. And I think we might have a road tractor stuck. I don't know if he can get out or not. Looks like he's going to gonna get out. So, we'll join up with you tomorrow. We've got about 25 acres left. Yeah, he's going to get it backed up here. Yeah, I just dumped that on Lukens. Yeah, okay. Alright. Yeah, we'll see ya. Hello? Now, that's it for tonight, Mike. We're done. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah, bye. Well, they got that one out of there. So, we'll head on out ourselves. Get an early start this morning we could get an inch and a half of rain today I thought it was gonna start raining overnight last night we got done with that one small piece we should have just rolled into this one but I didn't want to be I didn't want to have the guys on top of the bulk in the dark being that it was right up full but we're getting a start here this morning maybe we can beat the rain Maybe we can't, but what I had planned on doing was just chopping this in the rain today and dump carting all of it out of here. There's maybe 25 or 6 acres left here, and um, that's going to do it for the BMR for this year. So, we'll see how the weather holds out here. Hopefully we can get a majority of this done be a lot easier to chop it direct and a lot faster than running it on carts so we'll uh, have to see how it goes here well this is the last of the BMR it started sprinkling just after I chopped the second or the third load I thought sure we were not entirely going to be rained out because we planned on just mudding it in anyways but the rain is kind of held off the wind is blown all night and I don't know if maybe the wind didn't blow this storm system out of the area or moved it through at a faster rate anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to roll right into chopping conventional silage. We've got one bunk to fill of that. And in a week or so, we should be done with uh, chopping corn. Now uh, the leaves are uh, starting to turn on the trees, and I thought sure this morning with the way the wind blew last night, that we wouldn't have any leaves left on the trees so yesterday was a real good color day as far as leaves go on the trees and with the way this wind's blowing we might only have a few days of it left so we've got I don't know 40 rows left here and then we'll be done with BMR Well, we got a lot more done today than what I thought we were going to get done. We got about 40 acres of conventional corn chopped. It's just a little bit after 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and we have just loaded the last dump wagon load of the day here. It's been raining on and off for the past, well, it's kind of been raining all, all day, but it, it just started to pick up its pace a little bit here. 
and we had to dump cart about three quarters of this field here in order to get it done we're not going to chop anything more today we're going to shut her down we've got to cover that one bunk here in the morning we've got to get set up for that and with that being said that is going to do it for today kind of a bonus to get this amount of work done today because they said it was going to rain or start raining here last night and they said we were going to get anywhere between a half an inch and two inches of rain with the amount of wind that we got i thought sure i was hoping rather that with the way the wind was blowing i was hoping that it kind of blew the storm off course but um it is uh i don't know we still could get potentially get that amount of rain so they're dumping the last cartload on right now and that'll do her so we will catch you at the next video